Hey, this is Vo from Vocal Pockets, and I'm here to teach you how to use Groove Builders to make music more authentic to you, find the right groove and balance for your beats, and develop your own signature groove. This video consists of two parts. The first part will show you how to add and save Groove Builders in Cubase or Nuendo. The second part will show you how to apply them. For purposes of this video, references to Cubase mean Cubase and Nuendo. Let's start with adding and saving Groove Builders. Your download includes MIDI versions of Groove Builders. Locate that folder within the browser panel on the right. By doing so, you can easily see the Groove Builder files and play before and after examples that give you a sense of the balance that the particular Groove Builder can add. When you look at Groove Builder files, you'll see a naming convention. Here's what everything means. First, you'll see a number. Groove Builders are numbered from one to an end number with Groove Builder 1 having the most significant timing impact when applied at 100%. In other words, Groove Builder 1 is going to have swing and will move the notes more than Groove Builder 15, for example. Each numbered Groove Builder also has a different VD4H profile. VD4H stands for Velocity Designed for Hi-Hats and is designed to give your hi-hats more bounce, though you can try using this feature on other elements of your track like conga patterns to get some fun results. Next in the naming convention, V Pocket stands for Vocal Pockets. The capitalized letters next to V Pockets represent the genre that inspired the Groove Builder. Then you had the name of the Groove Builder, and finally you have the timing settings. With respect to the timing settings, for many styles of music, 16 note quantization will be sufficient. Generally, if you have more than 16 hits of a particular instrument in a measure, you can use a more granular timing setting like 132. Generally, if you only have seven hits of a particular instrument, you can either use 1 8th or 1 16th. In short, if you choose 1 16th, all your notes will be moved to the nearest 16th note grid. If you choose 1 8th, all your notes will be moved to the nearest 8th note grid. Finally, with respect to timing settings, if you see a T in front of a timing setting, it means that the Groove Builder is designed for triplet bass feelings. Now let's move over to the sequencer. I already have some Groove Builders added and saved here, and it's easy to add more. Drag and drop them onto a new track in the sequencer. If Cubase creates a system track, you could delete that extra track. And if Cubase creates an extra instrument track, you can hide that. To save the Groove Builders, Highlight the actual MIDI file that you added, and then click on the E at the top right to open up the Quantize panel. From there, drag and drop the MIDI file into the Quantize panel, then simply click the button that says Save as Preset, and the Groove Builder will be saved as a preset within Cubase. Now, once you do this process once, you shouldn't have to do it again. If you click the Select Presets, you'll see my Groove Builders that are already saved here. Now let's transition to applying Groove Builders to find a groove that speaks to us and start discovering our signature groove. We have a standard beat in Cubase to which we will apply Groove Builders. Within your product download, you should see three MIDI drum files marked with quantized to the grid in parentheses. I've added those to my project. There's a MIDI file called Hi-Hat, which you should set up to trigger a hi-hat sound of your choice, a file called Kick, which you should set up to trigger a kick sound of your choice, and a file called Snare which you should set up to trigger a snare sound of your choice. No matter whether you're using a drum kit or a sampler, feel free to adjust the position of the notes on the piano roll to find a sound of your liking. Let's double click on the hi-hat track and we'll see it open up in the piano roll. Now here's how to think about applying crew builders. To use an analogy, if your beat is food, crew builders are seasoning and without seasoning, food can be bland. When you apply seasoning to a dish, you start at zero and slowly add seasoning to taste. In other words, you don't dump all the seasoning in at once and then try to pair it back. Use the same seasoning approach when applying Groove Builders. In the Quantize panel, you're going to take the position down to zero and ensure that the velocity is also at zero as well. Then you're going to slowly blend each of these up to an amount that sounds good to you, first starting with the position and then moving over to velocity. If you click Auto, while doing this, you can actually hear the changes to the mini notes in real time. So let me select, let's say, a crew builder inspired by a funk song. The position and velocity, or VD4, are at zero. And I'm going to slowly blend this up on my hi-hat. And you'll see the notes change here on the grid, as well as the velocity bars.
So that sounds good to me. So here's where we started. And here's where we got in a few seconds using Groove Builders. Now, we've only touched the drums. Other than keeping the beat as is, there are four creative decisions we can make from here. And this is how you start developing your signature groove. The four creative decisions are as follows. One, uniformity, which means using the same Groove Builder at the same position strength for the other elements of your track. Two, sub-uniformity, which means using the same groove builder, but at a different position strength than you did for the drums here. Three, mix, which means using a different groove builder for the other elements of your track. And four, submix. Submix means dividing a track into two and using a different groove builder for each part. For example, if I wanted to use submix on a hi-hat track, I could use one groove builder for the first eight hits and a different one for the following eight hits. By choosing one of these creative techniques, you could start crafting your signature groove that will make your music more identifiable. If I wanted to use these techniques, I would bounce down my drums to audio files. Then for the next elements that I add to the track, like a melody, for example, I would go to the quantize panel and select the applicable groove builder. The great thing about groove builders is that you're in control of how much groove and bounce that you add. Now, let's talk about presenting a track to a vocalist. One way to tell if a groove builder is making an impact other than using your ears is to do the Mary Had a Little Lamb test. What's that? Play the track with the groove builder and repeat the line, Mary Had a Little Lamb. Then play the track without the groove builder, and if your enunciation of that line, Mary Had a Little Lamb, is different, you could tell the groove builder is making an impact. So I'll do that now. I'll play the track with the groove builder and allow you to repeat that line to yourself, and then I'll play the completely quantized version. Quantized version. If your enunciation was different, imagine how a vocalist could come up with a new hook or a flow when you send them a beat with Groove Builders. I usually season my track with them until I myself am able to come up with a flow. That way, if I send the beat to an artist and they say, this is cool, I'm trying to figure out what to do with it, I can pitch a flow to them that may lead to the next catchy flow or hook, and that way I'm adding more value to the relationship, and you could do the same when you use this tool. Something else to keep in mind is that if you ever switch samples or add effects to your sounds, you can easily recalibrate the right groove by resetting what you've done, bringing the position number back to zero, and increasing it to your liking based on the sounds that you may have modified. You can also use groove builders to vary the arrangement of your song. For example, you can use one groove for the verse and a different groove for the chorus or the bridge. So thus far, we've applied Groove Builders to MIDI tracks. The great thing about them in Cubase is that you can apply the timing feature to audio. Where this comes in handy is if you have audio loops from a kit or you get stems from an engineer and the bounce isn't exactly sounding like you envision, you can use Groove Builders to tweak the bounce and get something that you're looking for. And it's easy to do this. I'll create an audio copy of these hi-hats. And then I'll come over to the quantizer and I'll just show you this for illustrated purposes. I'll click on audio warp. And as I move the position, you can see the note shifting and changing. Now, let's say you're the type of producer that starts with melodies and samples first. Whether it be a MIDI melody or a audio sample from a pack, those samples and melodies have their own bounce to them, and you can use Groove Builders to find the groove that's best suited for your samples and melodies. Here's how I do this. I draw 16 hi-hat notes and then apply the timing information like we discussed to find a pocket in space that matches the melody or sample. Here's an example of me doing so. I muted the kick and the snare, and I'll just play the hi-hats with the sample. I'll select a groove builder, ensure that the position and velocity are at zero. I could turn off audio warp, given that I'm working with MIDI, and I'll slowly increase the position and velocity to an amount that sounds good. So here is the beat when it was quantized to the grid. And here's what we got with Groove Builders. A 
couple additional notes about the quantize panel. As you know that I've been working mainly with position and velocity, and there's some other features that you could play around here for additional creative fun. For example, there's pre-Q if you wanted the beat to be quantized but before the crew builder is applied. There's max move. Here I have it set on 4-4 because I don't want to limit how much the groove builder is affecting a tracks. Instead of having it a smaller granular timing setting, I have it at 4.4. Four. There's this also a feature called iterative quantize. I personally don't use it when I'm applying groove builders, but you can consider using it. And there should be more information about that in Cubase's documentation on this particular feature. Finally, I'll share some additional creative fun. If you use a drum plugin that provides the ability to trigger different samples depending on the velocity of a note, you can come up with some really creative results. Here's an example using Battery 4. So as you see there, as I increased the VD4H or the velocity amount, I got different rhythmic results. You could potentially use a technique like this for the main part of your song or for sections like the bridge or the outro to give your track more variation. This technique also works well if you wanted to use pitch versions of a hi-hat. For example, if you have a hi-hat sound and want to hear it transposed a number of semitones for certain hits of the hi-hat, you can really experiment with different feelings in that respect using groove builders. Another creative technique that you could use is select specific hi-hat notes within a pattern to apply a groove builder. So if I have this hi-hat pattern and it's back on the grid, I can select a few of the notes, come over here, select the groove builder, and I'll just click quantize so that you can hear how the first couple of notes are effective. So I'll end this video with a challenge. For the next three beats you make, use group builders and then create a separate version that's completely quantized and does not use VD4H. See which version sounds more authentic to you as a producer and which one has a better bounce. Feel free to tag us on Instagram at Vocal Pockets with any videos of you using group builders. Thanks for tuning in. I hope that this was helpful. And if it was, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Enjoy the rest of your day and hopefully that day is spent creating music.